so it's my pleasure to move to the next uh, keynote speech by uh, Professor Diniti Pires. So Professor Diniti Pires obtained her PhD in molecular biology, in vitro fertilization and toxicology from the University of Sheffield, the UK. She is currently a professor in zoology at the University of Sri Jayawardenepur, Sri Lanka, and she focuses mainly on the areas of pharmacognosy, cancer biology, infertility toxicology, and molecular pathways. She has many awards under her name, including the Presidential Award for Scientific Publications in the year 2015. I cordially invite Professor Diniti to deliver her address. Uh. Thank you so much for your kind words. So actually this is kind of last minute preparation. I'm sorry if there's any wrong. Uh, so I'm not a bioinformatician. So can you, can you all hear me? Yes, uh, Professor, okay. we can hear you. I am more into drug di discovery and drug therapy. But I, we use a little bit of bioinformatics or especially docking part uh, in our drug discovery. So it's, uh, it happened after Dr. Prash visit to Sri Lanka. He did a workshop. So one of my students who were there, he learned the bioinformatics. Then he went into docking. So he's, he's the person who is doing the docking part for me. So today I think... Um, I'm going to talk about uh, some of my research, what we are doing currently. So we are trying to isolate certain compounds, especially against cancer and diabetes. So I'm going to talk about, and also uh, uh, infectious diseases and especially methicillin resistant bacteria, which is a, comp which is a very problematic strain in Sri Lanka. So I will talk about a little bit of my research experience on those aspects. So if I'm to give an overview of my uh, speech today, so as you all know, even in India and even in Sri Lanka, we, we have a lot of plants, the biodiversity is high. So we used, uh, since ancient days, we used uh, plants in our medicine traditional medicine, even yeah, Indian Ayurvedic medicine and Sri Lankan traditional medicine. So this was given as a single herb or a decoction. That's it. it's a mixture of uh, several herbs. So uh, if we try to isolate from a decoction, it's not going to work. But if you try to isolate from a single herb or single plant, so we can go into uh, drug development. So there are certain drugs developed uh, like that in the market now. But if you take this uh, drug development process, it's, a, it's like a several step process, not a single step process. So first we have to identify, or we have to gather information about the disease, what we are aiming at. So here, as I said before, we are mainly aiming at diabetes because it's a huge problem and also cancer, but uh, still we haven't isolated any compounds for cancer and also uh, the infection diseases. And then also, then you have to identify the target, uh, which, which target you are going to look at with this drug or uh, the potentially isolated compound is of course, it's going to be a protein. Then we have to validate the target uh, after doing that. Then, <laughs> then we have to identify the promising molecule, potential molecule from the herb or from the plant or from whatever. From a, it could be a toxin even. To, to develop as a drug. And then we have to do safety testing. And then, uh, as you know, there are several other processes as well. Uh, and this is the overview of like the other processes. Once you have to, you have the isolated product, 
then you do in vitro studies that uh, then after doing in vitro studies you have to do animal studies because animal studies will confirm whether this is active because without animal studies we can't go into clinical trials so after uh, these animal studies only we can go into clinical trials for approval so here we are looking for a lead compound present in a plant there are so many phytochemicals in a plant because uh, those phytochemicals are there for reason plants need to protect themselves from various infection diseases of fungi bacteria and also toxins in the environment uh, stress conditions so that's why they have these phytochemicals to protect themselves so we have to identify the lead compound and then we have to narrow down so first we what is the first one we do the uh, the total phytochemical analysis and see whether there are like uh, any uh, see if we are going to study diabetes we are going to look at the in vitro studies in vitro assays and see whether this plant has diabetic effect if so we are going to narrow it down so and then finally identify so i will give that procedure later on uh, talk about briefly about that procedure and then uh, so here i will talk about the compounds we isolated for diabetes as you know diabetes is a huge problem worldwide problem i know even in india even in sri lanka it's a metabolic disease diseases is a non communicable disease so this is due to high blood sugar and uh, <coughs> could be due to insulin deficiency and mainly in india and sri lanka it is due to receptor inactivity because insulin is there but the insulin receptor is inactive so the when insulin even if the insulin is bound to the receptor the activity is not uh, given so because of this problem this has become a chronic uh, disease in the world so you can see i have given you some data which i got from who uh, what is the percentage now how it's going to increase in the future and also this could lead to other diseases cardiovascular diseases and there is a link between uh, diabetes and cholesterol and cardiovascular diseases and or of course other diseases and also you know the drugs they give they have different drugs uh, prescribed for this disease and they are like highly toxic if you take it uh, long run there are a lot of side effects so that's why it's important for us to isolate uh, plant based green compounds which are supposed to be less toxic actually we have done some clinical trials Use in some other plant material. Yeah, we saw the toxicity is very less. So here uh, I'm going to talk about two plants we studied. That is Passiflora subarosa. That's a um, that's a terrestrial plant. Then Cunospora minima. That's an algae uh, from our sea. So if I talk about Passiflora subarosa, now Passiflora subarosa. is also known as devil pumpkin we eat this actually we eat this leaf we use this as a salad so there are some known uh, antibacterial and anti cancer activities and also the traditional um, practitioners they do prescribe this for diabetes so we did the initial studies in uh, uh, in vitro and even using uh, animal models to see whether this leaves are active for diabetic conditions yes we found that it's active then only uh, actually so we do several extraction methods like we use aqueous aqueous water or hexane or methanol we use or chloroform several solvents to extract the phytochemicals as you know it depends on the polarity of the phytochemicals so 
initially we do that and we then find out which has the highest activity which uh, solvent phytochemicals in which solvent here we found is the aqueous extraction so that's the uh, solvent or extraction we selected to narrow down the phytochemicals uh, analysis so here what we did was we fractionated in a sequential manner right with the increased polarity using different solvent the aqueous extractions uh, fractionated using hexane chloroform ethyl acetate butanol and aqueous so that's the residual part after fractionation of butanol the remaining part is the aqueous part and we carried out for each of these fraction we carried out the uh, in vitro assays diabetic assays to find out which uh, fraction is the most active so then we found out it is the ethyl acetate fraction that is most active against the uh, alpha myelase alpha myelase and alpha glucosidase enzyme so what are these alpha myelase and alpha glucosidase enzyme so these are like uh, alpha amylase is important for conversion of starch into sugar so if you can block this that conversion uh, process is uh, inhibited then alpha glucosidase is the other part so it it converts glucose uh, glycogen <coughs> into glucose so that why uh, by that way also we can prevent glucose increase so we studied mainly those two parts so so after we identified now ethyl acetate fraction is the most potent or active fraction we use cefadex to use in <coughs> methanol and chloroform and uh, we uh, run it on cefadex and we got six sub fraction uh, again we collected these six sub fractions and uh, again we carried out the same assays to identify which fraction sub fraction is the most active then after that those we take that uh, sub fraction and we do reverse this hplc and then after that we carry out the nmr uh, spectra or nmr assay so actually this isolation part that means hplc cefadex and nmr spectra was uh, done by our collaborators in uh, university of british columbia in vancouver canada not we, we didn't do it in sri lanka so this is the Con, uh, compound we isolated which is fumaric acid and as you can see this isolated compound itself it has very potent uh, alpha glucosidase enzyme inhibitory activity now acarbos is the control we use now acarbos is the prescribed drug now the function of acarbos is same that means it inhibit alpha glucosidase enzyme in the body when you take that drug so you can see the activity is very much similar so we can see uh, even alpha myelase you can see activity is very much similar so we can say this uh, compound is highly active right so we are in the process of like uh, isolating more comp uh, more this compound and conducting we have to conduct the animal studies also we want to do uh, develop uh, uh, nanoparticles and see how whether it's going to increase the activity so we carried out one of my actually this was done by somewhere in denium uh, uh, the docking studies to see how this com compound uh, fluoric acid binds with alpha glucosidase so here we found that this is the glide score we got negative uh, 3.599 and this is the 2d analysis it shows that this is this uh, binds with uh, a single hydrogen bond between uh, two this glycine protein so that's what we found when we conducted the docking part 
So the second plant uh, we studied was the algae. Uh, it's a brown algae, Cunospora minima, and this is also known for like its uh, various uh, diseases actually uh, effective against various diseases. So algae, as you know, they are popularly used in South, Southeast Asia for uh, they prepare seaweed and they use these for cream in creams. So there are a lot of uh, production going on with the algae. So here also now algae has a highly uh, high polysaccharide content. Now this polysaccharide content is the uh, part that is responsible for anti-cancer activity. And there has been a uh, drug isolated from this algal poly polysaccharide that is in the market now for um, cancer treatment. So we have to uh, get rid of this polysaccharide part if we want to do the diabetic analysis. So that's why we depolysaccharide and we conducted the polyphenol because polyphenol is compounds are the compound phytochemicals that is responsible for the anti-diabetic activity. So we uh, conducted methanol extraction to isolate this or uh, to extract the polyphenolic uh, compound. And then again, we uh, fractionated this crude methanol extracted again, like I said before, using uh, increasing polarity uh, solvents, that is hexane, chloroform, ethyl acetate, and this is the residual fraction aqueous. So here also we conducted the same way we conducted the in vitro assays, and we found that chloroform uh, fraction is the highest active fraction. Now you, I hope you can see, uh, sorry. Mm. So I can't see the chat is open. <laughs> okay, uh, you can see it's highly potent. Uh, this, uh, if you look at the IC50 values, uh, it's more potent than uh, Akabos we use. Again, we use Akabos. Um, and again, it was more potent against alpha glucosidase enzyme than the alpha amylase enzyme. Then we use the same, what I described before, subfractionism procedure. And for each subfraction, we have to conduct, we conducted these uh, in vitro assays. Then after doing that only, we selected the subfraction to do the uh, chromatography and then the NMR uh, spectrum. So here we isolated the, uh, this is the NMR spectrum. And here we isolated a novel compound. This is fucosanthin derivative. This is not fucosanthin, it's different to fucosanthin. And this is a derivative of fucosanthin. So we did this about a month ago. So we are in the process of confirming its activity, uh, bioactivity. So we haven't conducted any docking part yet. So those are the main two compounds we isolated thus far and uh, against anti -di against diabetes. So now let me move on to our other uh, compound that is mainly against um, uh, Staphylococcus aureus, which is methicillin resistant. Now this, this uh, bacterial species is a multi-drug resistant bacteria. Now this is a real uh, public health problem because it is resistant to a lot of antibiotics. This is uh, this has been seen in Sri Lanka and even in other South Asian hospitals. So therefore, we and it's also resistant to methicillin. That's why we say methicillin resistant uh, uh, Staphylococcus aureus. So this it's a challenge to discover new antibiotics against these uh, antibiotic resistant species. So this, especially this uh, uh, strain could be life threatening as well. It, it causes different uh, degree of illnesses like, you know, like you get for COVID uh, respiratory problems and 
it could be life threatening and you know why the antibiotic resistant is there because virus and bacteria they are very they have very short lifetime so therefore their life cycle is so fast therefore there is like a lot of gene crossing between them so that's why we can and mutations that's why we can we could see this uh, antibiotic resistant so here also we use uh, plumbago indica uh, and this is common to even in india and found in sri lanka as well and we use the bark uh, to isolate the compound here also we studied the different extractions and carried down distributions assays to see which one gives the main anti and uh, anti microbial uh, bacterial this methylation resistant effect and then we selected that particular extract that is methanol and then we conducted the fractionation procedure like we did before again in here we found the ethyl acetate fraction was highly uh, active so you can see if you look at the inhibition that's how we measure we put the disc and then we measure the uh, zone diameter of the zone they produce and uh, you can see this is the pos positive control that's a, that is a known antibiotic used for this particular strain gentamicin and see this uh, it's more or less similar so again we uh, di did this in uh, ubc this isolation part and using the same way uh, i described before uh, and we isolated plumbagin here uh, from plumbago indica that's for how the name came the uh, uh, and we actually we conducted the uh, met, uh, activity as well i think i have it in here so against the this species so it gave good results and here uh, if you look at the we did conduct the uh, docking studies again against um, uh, type 2 topoisomerase of uh, this spe bacterial species so again uh, this site map analysis showed the glide score you can see a really good glide score here with a lot of minimum energy barrier <coughs> and here there are three proteins we could see that is arginine glycine and sorry and lysine that all three proteins uh, form uh, very strong bonds with this uh, plumbagin molecule so now the next phase we have to do is the de development phase as you as i said before we have to do the animal testing and then go for uh, phase one clinical studies we give it for normal people then we use pe people who are suffering from these disease patients uh, i mean diseases that those are patients then we do this phase two then the phase three is like different countries we have to select then only we get the authorization to manufacture this drug so actually that's about it that's what we are doing now the uh, thing is research is really slow these days because of this covid and lockdown and a lot of problems so actually i would like to acknowledge my uh, team dr dave williams from ubc canada who did all the isolation procedures um, for us and deshan pereira uh, who did who initially did the docking part who taught his friend saumya who did the other docking part for me saumya hindeni mr and also miss indivari disanayaka miss tilina and miss miss saumya se one day and also dr prash actually he is the one who showed us the path for this docking analysis and also mr balachandran and other organizers of this uh, conference thank you so much any questions
Okay. Thank you so much, madam. Uh, does the audience have any questions? Uh, I any idea think there is a question. Of secondary the substrates, uh, distribution of these plant after extraction. Yeah, actually, after extraction, these, you know, the, in the crude come extraction, the activity is so high. When you fraction it, it could reduce, but sometimes if you uh, use the right uh, solvent for fractionation procedure, you can get the total compound into that uh, fra particular fraction because it depends on the polarity of the compound. MD simulation. Okay, thank you very much. That's a, a suggestion I've got. I will look into that. Thank you for that uh, suggestion. MD simulation. Maybe I have to doc I have to ask Dr. Prash for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not really an expert in that, uh, Diniti. Thank you so much for an excellent talk. It's a, it's a very scintillating talk. Uh, by the way, you know, Renuka, she is my wife. So ah, okay. So uh, maybe she can teach me how to yeah. do that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for that uh, comment. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much, Professor Diniti. So uh, we conclude this session by uh, this uh, excellent talk. And uh, we will be uh, joining back at 2 p.m. for the oral presentation sessions. Mm -hmm.